Can I take creepy, awkward 10-year-olds hitting on other little 10-year-old girls for 500, Bob? Ooh, that's a hot mug, guy. And before I start, I should mention that I did forget to put the rating part in for the Magnificent Seven episode review. I don't know why I forgot it. It was a five out of seven, just letting you know. It was a five out of seven. Hey guys, this is my review for episode two of season three, The Kids Are Alright. And some of the jokes have not aged well in this episode. Don't get me wrong, some of the humor in this episode is actually pretty decent, and the chemistry between Dean and the kid is very good. And actually a lot of the pantomiming is very good too. However, there's a few points too where it's just like... This episode is essentially their version of Children of the Corn. The episode centers around Dean and Sam coming to this town where Dean finds out that an old flame of his is living there and because he's basically taking any chance to boink anything he can find, he goes and meets her and he finds out that she had a kid. And this kid is basically him. The jacket, the music taste, even the hair gel, even the view of women. There's just this point where he goes into the bouncy castle and he says, look out ladies. <laughs> I understand where the joke is coming from. They wanted to get as many Dean references for this kid as possible and obviously Dean's a man with the ladies and it just doesn't work when it's 10 years old. Other than that though, I did enjoy seeing this kid kind of have the same mannerisms as Dean. At one point, they're both eating cake and they both watch a mom pass them by. Very good direction by Phil Segaria again. He's always been a very decent, director. Admittedly, he's gotten a little bit lazier in later years, but that's also because the material has gotten a hell of a lot lazier, but this director has been consistent with the show almost since the beginning. And then there's Lisa. I'm actually kind of surprised at how much I forget she exists, considering how important she was to Dean for a period of time. Hell, she was even in a full season almost in season six. Lisa just doesn't have that much to her. She's a nice person. There really isn't much to her. And there's a reason why they eventually dropped her in season six is there's just nothing to do for her. But then they start to see that some of the kids are not as they appear. We see that some of them are this kind of mommy clone thing. It does lead to one of the creepiest moments in this season where putting the car in neutral and letting it slowly go into the water and thinking, my God, I just killed my weird robot mutant, not daughter, daughter. And then she goes back home and the daughter's there like, feed me mommy, super creepy. Some cool homages to the idea of children as horror images that was in Children of the Corn. And all the while this is happening, Sam and Ruby get to know each other a little bit more and we find out that <gasps> Ruby's a demon. But she also says, hey, check out your entire family history. Yellow Eyes has a hand in killing almost all of your family and we're never really going to explain why. I don't understand what the point of this part was. I think this was, again, a writer strike thing that they threw in because they thought they might do something with it and in the end, it really doesn't come of anything, as far as I know. Considering the writer strike and considering what happened to other shows during this time, it's not the worst thing because we still get to build this relationship between Ruby and Sam in a way that definitely changes in season four. The brothers find out that there's this monster, which I can't remember the name of right now, but it's basically creating these creatures. It's kidnapping the kids and replacing them with its own kind of entities. Weird because they kind of when they kill the main thing, which kind of like a Star Wars Phantom Menace sort of idea, you kill the brain and all their others die. Either way, it's cool to see the kids work together with Sam and Dean and for escaping. The episode ends with insinuating that Lisa and this kid will come back, which I don't even know if they came back in this season, but obviously they've come back. It's a fun episode, and while being kind of like a one-off and a humor episode, it also has some cool character building, adult building for Dean. So I do think this is a decent episode. It does have a few jokes that have not aged well, and there are some moments that are just kind of cringy, but otherwise I still find that this is a fun episode to watch. So in the end, I'm gonna give episode two a five out of seven. So I asked you guys what your comments were, and I did also forget to read some of the comments for The Magnificent Seven, so I'm gonna read those now. Season three, episode one, Kate Cassidy, Nuff Said. I do like her version of Ruby. I don't mind the second 
second version of Ruby, it works towards the narrative, but I definitely admit I like Kate Cassidy's version of it. The Magnificent Seven is alright, kind of slow until they finally figure out it's the Seven Deadly Sins. They hype them up way too much, though, considering they are killed off in one episode. The final conversation between the brothers is an excellent setup for the rest of the season, reiterating the hopeless situation Dean signed himself up for, and how he admits saving his brother was more for him than for Sam. I look forward to more Ruby and Dean's hilarious impulsiveness. I will admit that is an issue with The Magnificent Seven is that, considering these are the seven deadly sins, they are beaten quite easily. I think it was kind of showing the magnitude of what they had done. Also, they didn't think the show was going to go on for another 12 seasons. Not a fan of The Magnificent Seven. Memorable for Isaac being forced to drink Drano. Other than that, not too much to note. And now I'm going to read you the comments for this episode. The Kids Are Alright is by far the creepiest use of children in Supernatural. This episode also had me surprised from the deaths they pulled off in 2007. From Katie killing her father with a saw to Katie's mother trying to kill her child. Maybe it's just me, but the mother reacting towards the changeling version of Katie is how postpartum mothers get towards their children. As for Ben and Lisa, it would have been enjoyable if Ben was actually Dean's dad. What? Uh, I think you mean... Dean was his dad. <laughs> Although season three is short, it would make a subplot of Dean being a dad not work really well. It actually works a lot better with Dean being the father that Ben deserved and needed in his life. But Ben being like a young Dean and his mannerisms makes me wonder if Ben was actually trying to act like Dean because he wanted a dad or if in general was just like being like Dean and the writers wanted to be, to be funny. I feel like the acting is a lot better in this episode than the previous episode, except you can't be beat Jim Beaver in his acting on Supernatural. He's always good. The end scene in a way rips your heart out as Dean's one year to live is showing if he didn't make this deal maybe he could have lived a normal life, rather than be so obsessed with having Sam in his life. I really love how each episode in this season adds a sense of foreboding with Dean's inevitability going to hell and that there is nothing that they can change despite Dean trying to be more open with his emotions and feelings. Exactly, this season is a very internal look at the brothers, it's a very on the moment them going through the motions sort of idea and it's very character focused on his plight and eventually dying. The kids are alright is just that, alright. It gives a little more momentum to the season but I honestly ha just had it playing in the background and wasn't super engaged. A part of me wanted Ben to be somehow be Dean's kid and I always laugh when they show their similarities and Dean's panics. I do like how they use this storyline to really hit heavy on the fact that Dean has less than a year to live and realizes he will never have a family future. However, I forgot how quickly they revealed Ruby's demon identity. If it weren't for the strike, I wish they had kept us in the dark for a little bit longer. And do they ever explain why all the family and friends that Mary knew are dead? but somehow some cousins show up in season 6. The changelings are a creepy bunch, but I personally thought that their defeat was a little easy. They happened across the mother and lucky for the brothers burning her kills all of them, yeah. Looking forward to the next episode as we get a bit more humor. And now give your guys' comments on what you thought of Bad Day at Black Rock. This is the first episode where Laura Cohen is introduced. It's going to be cool to see her in this episode considering she would go on to be so successful in The Walking Dead. So make sure to leave your guys' comments and I'll read them off in the next episode review. Anyways guys, that's all for me. See you guys next time.